Hello and welcome to today's online service. I'm Dan, I'm the Discipleship Year student here at St Philip's and I'd love to give you a huge warm welcome and I hope that you enjoy your time this morning worshipping with us. Our service is going to be run by our youth today and our um, service is also an all-age service and something we love to do in all-age services is work, uh, celebrate people's birthdays. And um, so yeah, here we go. On, uh, I believe last week, Barbara Bourne had her birthday and she turned 80, which is incredible. Um, Jane, Jane Blunt had her birthday yesterday, I believe, on the 4th, so happy birthday to you. And James Jacobs had his birthday last month on the 17th and he turned 12. And uh, I, got it, I got it here that he received a leopard gecko and had a Chinese takeaway from the Happy Fryer, which is awesome. <laughs> so happy birthday to all of you guys. I'm now going to pray and then we're going to be followed by Josh who's going to lead us in worship and song. Dear Lord, I pray that uh, in this time of worship that your presence will be among us, Lord, that your spirit will be among us. And I pray that for this service, Lord, that it will be spirit-led. And I also pray that your message will be portrayed throughout all of it, Lord. Amen.
another thing we love to do on our all age services is uh, share testimonies of ways that God has been working in our lives. And uh, I caught up with Lisa this last week, and she she's got an incredible story. So we're gonna watch that now, and then after that, Ella's gonna bring us our Bible reading. So Lisa, what has God been doing in your life? This is my new car, and this is what God's been doing in my life. It's just amazing because it just happened that every single um, Tuesday and Wednesday before the larder, my previous car would break down, there'd be something go wrong with it. And it got to the point where a couple of Wednesdays ago, the mechanic came out and said that it's just it was dead, there's nothing you could do. The turbo gone again, it was the third time, and they weren't gonna replace it. So I was like, oh no, how am I gonna get to the larder for the food? And my husband brought me there that day, and as we were leaving, I got. I was praying with my daughter Evangeline, that said, we're gonna pray for a new car. So we did, and I think they were doing as well, we, we prayed for a new car, and that was on a Wednesday. On the Thursday, I had a phone call and it was from a friend of a friend who is a Christian and he offered us this car, <laughs> completely free. He said he wanted to bless us. Amazing. And oh so my. we had this car given to us. Okay, it's got its quirky ways. The uh, doors don't open down the passenger side, so we had to go in and out the windows or climb over. <laughs> <laughs> Big crack on the windscreen, but it's, you know, <laughs> it, I love it. So and I'm very, very thankful to God for this car. Awesome. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, what, a wonderful, yeah. what a wonderful God we serve. Yeah, and Wednesday they've been praying as well at the prayer group then. They've been praying for us to have a car. So it was a really quick, you know, sometimes you can pray and you don't see answers to prayer for ages, but this was like an answer to prayer within 24 hours. Amazing. So, awesome. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 19. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go to, into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul, pick, Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to the straight street to the house of Judah. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I have heard so many people talk terrible things about this man has done. To be leavers in Jerusalem and he is authorised by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go for Saul is my instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings as well as the people in Israel. And I will sh show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hand on, his sh on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me to has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got baptised and, after, and afterwards he ate some 
food and regained his strength. What on earth just happened there? Good question. I think to understand that, we need to go back to the beginning of the story. So Saul was a Jew and they didn't like Jesus or any of his disciples. How come we didn't like Jesus? Well, the Jews believed in the Old Testament and in that there are many prophecies about the Son of God coming to earth to save us. Now Christians believe that the person who did that was Jesus, whereas Jews believe that the Son of God is still to come to earth. But why was there so much hatred? Well, the Jews found it disrespectful and unlawful for someone to say that they are the Son of God when they aren't. And as they didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God, they hated him and his followers for insulting their God. So Saul thought that Jesus was blaspheming as well as his disciples and therefore wanted him dead? Jesus had already risen to heaven by this point, but yes, Saul wanted anyone who believed in Jesus dead. So, can you guess where Saul was going in this journey? To find people who believed in Jesus Christ. That's right. After he got permission from the high priests to go to synagogues in Damascus, he and his soldiers went on their way to find more believers of Christ. It's not looking good at the moment. No, you're right. It's not looking good at all. But thanks to Jesus, there is hope. In fact, as Saul was walking on the road to Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? What? I know, right? Then Saul asks, who are you, Lord? And then the voice says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But hold up a second. You're telling me that Jesus chose to speak to Saul, the man who hates him and is persecuting him and asks why are you persecuting me from heaven? There's more. Jesus told Saul to go to Damascus. However, when he tried to open his eyes, he couldn't see a thing. How can all this happen? Well, that's the mystery of God. His power has no limits. If his power had no limits, how come he didn't stop Saul from killing believers of Jesus any sooner? Well, God gave us free will so that we can make our own decisions. Otherwise, if he controlled everything we did, we would be robots under his control meaning there would be no relationship with our Father in Heaven. Anyway, let's get back to the story. There was this disciple waiting for Saul named Anadeus. No, wait. Anna Anabeus? No. Um... Ananias, I believe his name is. And while Paul was on his way to Damascus, God told Ananias to meet Saul in Damascus. Didn't that scare Ananias, seeing as he believed in Jesus being the Son of God and Saul was going there to prosecute people like him? Yes, in fact, he was terrified of him, and at first he really didn't want to go. However, he trusted in God and went to go and meet Saul. If that was me, and I heard that this guy named Saul, who loved putting believers of Jesus in prison, is coming to my city, I would hide from my life. Like, to do that involves an incredible amount of trust. Well, if there is a story to show that trusting in the Lord pays off, it's definitely this one. Because Ananias goes and meets Saul and says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That must have been so scary for Ananias to say, seeing as he was talking to a renowned prosecutor. It definitely was, but thank the Lord he did, because immediately after Ananias said that, Saul was able to see again and then got baptised, and instead of becoming a persecutor of Christ, he became a believer of Christ. What's a baptism? Isn't it when you get dunked under water? That's part of it, but it symbolises someone being born again and starting a new life being a follower of Jesus. And after that, he named himself Paul to show that he was a changed man. So you're saying that Saul decides to completely change his life? That's mental. How the biggest atheist I've heard of managed to become a believer of Christ with just one encounter with Jesus. And the amazing thing about that is that it's still true today. One encounter with Jesus is absolutely life-changing. One quick question though. How can we have an encounter with Jesus? Good question. Praying is a form of encountering Jesus because it's simply having a conversation with him. And the more we do that, the stronger our relationship is with Jesus, meaning the easier it is to trust him. So that means anyone can have an encounter with Jesus? Yeah, pretty much. In fact, I reckon we should pray for Jesus to be present in our lives right now. Dear God, please let us put our trust in you fully and help us over this time in lockdown and also keep us safe as we trust in you. Amen. Dear God, please guide our government leaders as they make decisions on easing the lockdown. Please help them to make the right choices for the safety and well-being of everyone. Amen. 
Dear Lord, please help us to see creation through your eyes, where everyone is equal and endlessly loved. We pray that all those protesting for equality are protected and that the protests stay peaceful. We pray for all families affected by racism and inequality and hope for a brighter future. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for the world that you have given us. Over lockdown, so many of us have become more appreciative of the beauty of it. Amen. Dear God, thank you for our community larder and that through trusting you, St Philip's has supported its local people. Amen. Dear God, I pray for our NHS and key workers. We thank them for all the work they have done and all the work they are doing. We pray that you keep them safe so that they can keep up their amazing work. Amen.
that is the end of our service this morning. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'd love to give a massive thank you to our youth. You guys are incredible. I'd love to also encourage you guys to continue to grow in your faith journey and grow in your relationship with God. A quick notice is that after the service, after this online service, we are gathering on Zoom. And although we can't be a community in person, we love to be a community online. And so we love to see your faces this morning. One of the ways I got the youth to um, participate is that I, uh, they said that I had to embarrass myself at the end of the service. And so after, after I say this closing prayer, there'll be a video of me and Josh doing a song of spirit breakout. But let's pray. Let's pray now. Dear Lord, keep us, Father, in this community of faith, the church of your son, Jesus Christ, and help us to confess him as Messiah and Lord in all we say and do. We ask this in his name. Amen. This land of mine, blaze, spirit blaze, and set our hearts on fire till we roar your praise and flow. River flow now, let the spirit break out to break our walls down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come down. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. Jesus, your name will lift high. Your glory shaking up the earth and sky. Revive. Break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. Jesus, would you shine and let the Father's glory build this land of mine? Blaze, spirit blaze, and set our hearts on fire till we roar your praise and flow. River flow now, let the spirit break out to break our walls down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come down. Spirit break.
great. Ah.